What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Avery here, and would you believe me if I told you that Jinzo topped in 2021? I don't think that you would. But now let me preference this by saying this Jinzo deck topped a 20-man local. Uh, came in first place undefeated, and I want to give a shout out before we get into. It. I want to give a shout out to Thomas Pan, Thomas Fan, on uh, Zodiac Duelist. He came in first place with this Jinzo Mad Lad Creation deck, uh, and his matchups are actually down here in uh, the comments. Round one, he played Blue Eyes Zexel and two Odom. Round two, he played against Blue Eyes Calamities, which was a 2-0. Round three, he played against Phantom Knights, 2-0. And then round four, he played against Eldritch Zexel, which he beat 2-1. So they went to three games instead of just 2 0 the guy. And I am still in shock that he topped with Jinzo, because Jinzo is, is Jinzo. Like, you stop trap cards, you know, you lock the opponent out of their traps, you don't let them play any traps, they can't think of traps, if they think of a trap, they lose, like... It's Trap Central. <laughs> so, with all that being said, again, it is a locals, but I still want to discuss the concept at hand uh, because Asian Persuasion also did cover this because uh, they both went to the same locals. But either way, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so that you do not miss out on any other videos that we post. And remember, you want to make sure that you're subscribed because we are buying a $1,000 Platinum Blue Eyes White Dragon. So if you want to be around for the unboxing of that, be sure that you're subscribed. So what is this deck's function other than making Dragoon and a Jinzo and just taking a dump on your opponent? We are playing some of the more interesting Jinzo cards here like Jector, Returner, Machine Menace, Jinzo Laird, which is basically a big eye for the deck. Um, we will discuss that as we go through the video here because really this deck is... This deck is dope. Like, this deck is super cool. I want to give another shout out to Thomas for topping with this. Like, congrats, man. Like you said on Facebook. Wow, that was that was attractive. You've been saying on Facebook for months that you have been trying really hard to top with this deck. And I'm just very happy for you that you were able to top with a deck that you've been working hard on. So congrats, man. So let's go ahead and dive on into it. We are playing one Alpha Master Beast, two Gamma Seal, two uh, Jinzo. Uh, one Jinzo Jector, so its name becomes Jinzo on the field or in the grave. You contribute it to add a Jinzo monster from your deck to your hand. So Jinzo, Returner, Machine Menace, uh, any of that fun stuff. Um, and then you get to reveal all set cards in your opponent's spell and trap zones. And if there are traps among them, then you could special summon Jinzo monsters from your hand up to the number of traps revealed. And you can only use this effective Jector once per turn. So if you've got Jinzo and Mach Jinzo Machine Menace, they've got two traps. Bada bing, bada boom. You get to play out both of these Jinzos. Um, also, a little fun fact that since he only played against Eldritch last round, it's definitely safe to say that if you're playing this against Eldritch, you should be winning the game. Ah, the whale had to drink some coffee. So this deck just shits on Eldritch. Because, I mean, if they have three traps in the back row, you can just tribute this, look at all their traps, gain that knowledge, but then also special summon any Jinzo that you have. And you're going to be able to play out at least one because you're adding one to the hand. So then we're playing one Returner. It can attack directly, and when it's sent to the grave, you get a target at Jinzo in your graveyard and special summon it, but destroy it during the end phase. So you can bring this guy out and, uh, you know, link off with it or tribute it. You know, fun things like that. Then we have Jinzo the Machine Menace. If it, so if a trap is face up on the field or in either grave, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, it becomes level 6. So if you have this guy out because you brought it out with this, you can special summon this and then make a rank 6 into Jinzo Laird. Um, or, well, yeah, Jinzo Laird really is your only choice. Um, and then during the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card, special summon a Jinzo from your hand or grave, and then you can destroy all traps your opponent controls, and if a card is set, reveal it, you can only use each effect of Jinzo Machine Menace once per turn. So this, once again, allows you to see any face downs, um, and you gain that knowledge, and then of course you get to pop their traps. Now, obviously they can still respond if it's something like a Scarlet Sanguine, yeah, but if you already have this on the board, then they're not going to be able to do anything anyway, so... Definitely a very nasty combination. Then we're playing one Jakuzuru. We're playing the Cypher and Package with the Gamma. Two Psychic Bounder, two Psychic Mega Cyber, two Skullmeister, three Summoner Monk, and then one 
Lightning Strike Kaiju. So Psychic Bounder and Psychic Mega Cyber also go in hand in hand with Genzo. Psychic Bounders or Stratos. If it's normal, it's the first time you get out of Genzo or a Spell or Trap, they simply list that card in its text from the deck to your hand. So yay, we can search for Amplifier. <laughs> that totally broken card. When another monster controls attack by an opponent's monster before damage calculation, you can destroy both the attacking monster and this card. And you can only use each effect of Psychic Bounder once per turn. That's probably never going to come up. You're just going to be using it for the Stratos search effect. Um, I doubt that the opponent's going to be attacking into your monster without popping this first. Then with Psychic Mega Cyber, if the opponent controls more spell traps than you do, you get a special summon this card from your hand, but you can only do that once per turn. And then when he declares an attack on an opponent's effect monster while you control Jinzo, you contribute him to place that opponent's monster face up in their spell and trap zone as a continuous trap, which is very nice. And then you can only use this effect of Mega Cyber once per turn. So it makes your Machine Menace live, uh, makes your Jector live. It, it definitely goes hand-in-hand hand with the deck. So rounding off, we're also playing the Dark Magician and the Red-Eyes Black Dragon for the obvious Red-Eyes Fusion. Playing one copy of Instant Fusion because we are playing Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, three Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, one Monster Born, one Red Geki, one Red-Eyes Fusion, two Super Poly, the one of Tactics Talent, because why not? Two Imperm, and then we are playing three Law of the Cosmos and one Psychic Wave. So Law of the Cosmos, your opponent can set one trap directly from their hand or deck. Then, if they did, special summon a Jinzo from your deck, and if they did not, then you get to add one Jinzo or one monster that simply lists that card in its text in your deck or hand, you can only activate one per turn. So, the opponent says, okay, cool, I'm going to set my Imperm or my Scarlet Sanguine, you get to say, cool, I'm going to play out Jinzo so that I can nullify your trap anyways. And then if they s decide, well, I'm not going to add anything, you can go, okay, cool, I'm just going to add the Jinzo to my hand, uh, and then... I'm going to uh, bring out Machine Menace, or, you know, I'm going to bring out Jinzo Jector, and uh, just still bring out my Jinzo anyway. Uh, and then Psychic Wave. This card is really interesting. It's basically a Foolish Burial. So if you control a Machine Monster, you can send a Jinzo from your hand or deck to the grave. So keep in mind it mentions Jinzo, so we can search this with Psychic Bounder. And then inflict 600 damage to the opponent uh, once you send a Jinzo from your hand or deck to the grave. Um, during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave, then target a machine monster in your graveyard, send one Jinzo monster from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, add that targeted monster to your hand. So, you can activate this, you can dump the returner, returner will trigger giving you one of your Jinzos, uh, or you can even do it vice versa, banish this to dump the returner once you already have this in the grave, then use this to get out Jinzo. So, you've got plenty of ways to get to your Jinzo. For the side deck, we're playing two Cycle Breeder, two Lancia, two Nibiru, two Cosmic Cyclone, one Feather Duster, two Lightning Storm, two Evenly Matched, and two Icy Dragon's Prison. Extra deck, we are playing one Anaconda, one Unicorn, one Phoenix, one Boral Sword, one BLS Soldier Chaos, one Tornado Dragon, one Baguska, one Light Dragon Attic Nister. So it's two level fours, which isn't very hard. You're running a lot of level fours. If a monster monster to control be destroyed by card effect, you can detach material from this card instead, and then you can only use it to falling effects once per turn. You can detach material from this card, destroy face of monsters or controls up to the number of attic Mr. monsters you control, so you'll be able to pop one. And then when another Cyber's monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon a Link monster from your graveyard. Uh, you're not playing any other Cybers, so I'm assuming that we just use this for its um, destruction protection and then be able to pop one monster. So, it's cute. Then we're playing Double A Zeus, one Abyss Dweller, one Thousand Eyes, one Starving Venom for the Super Poly, one Dragoon, and one Mud Dragon because we are playing Super Poly. So what do I think about this deck? This is fucking cool. <laughs> like, this is just straight up hilariously cool. Um, let's do some test hands with this here. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, this isn't terrible, right? Like, especially if you go second, you just Kaiju Slumber their board. Uh, if you're going first, you could go, like, Summoner Monk, ditch, I guess, the Kaiju Slumber, get out another Monk, make, uh, I guess, Boguska, right? You make the Boguska and just sit on it. Uh, you can go Law of the Cosmos to just immediately cheese out a a, uh, a Jinzo, almost said a Joker for some reason. Um, or you can just even add one to your hand. Um, yeah, that's that's really interesting. I mean, I guess something else you can do is get out the second monk and then ditch another spell to go for a third monk. I don't know why you would do that. But to be able to make Boguska first turn is not bad either. Huh. I'm definitely going to mess around with this, and uh, I might even watch that deck profile on Asian Persuasion's channel. But guys, please, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, do you think this could actually be competitive? I don't think so, because, I mean, again, it, it was a 20-man local. I really, 
I, I don't know. Like, it has a really good Eldritch matchup, right? But then, like, if it goes against something like, let's say, Zodiac, like, even if it goes second against Zodiac and they have their board set up with Dryden, like, the moment you try to get out that Jinzo, they're just going to Dryden pop it. And if you don't have a follow-up, like, what are you doing? Unless you, like, cheese out the Dryden pop and then, you know, you bait everything out and then use the Red Eyes Fusion to bring out Dragoon, in which case you're, you're winning. I think even someone commented on the Facebook post on Zodiac Duels and said, so basically Dragoon did all the work. <laughs> which, I mean, uh, Dragoon makes any deck much better, let's be honest here. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.